I refer you to the YouTube video by Dr. Rhonda Patrick referenced in the description below for the science behind eating sulforaphane. Broccoli sprouts are the plant that contains the most myrosinase and glucoraphanin, which when combined creates sulforaphane. So the question then becomes, how do we grow broccoli sprouts? There are many methods. One is to use vertical trays that drip water down. Here is a representative product. I tried this product because it looked like a better approach than mason jars. What I found was that with broccoli seeds, these trays kept the seeds too wet and did not allow adequate ventilation for drying. I followed the instructions, but the yield was very low. This should not discourage anyone from trying this approach or product. I then tried the wide mouth 32 ounce mason jars with stainless steel mesh lids. The use of cradles and mason jars seemed to work better for me. The cradles allowed me to easily adjust this jar inclination angles. I found that for the first two days, the best inclination angle was about 45 degrees. This allowed me to roll a jar after draining and evenly disperse the seeds in the walls of the mason jar without the seeds sliding down the walls of the jar. After the seeds had started to grow tails, a 60 de degree angle was better for drainage. Here is a technique uh, that I use after you initially wash the seeds. You can see they collect all in the bottom. And what you want to do though is evenly roll this and evenly present them across all the surfaces of the glass. You can see you can work at it, and what you want to prevent is them from uh, clumping and not being able to dry out. This process relies on wetting and then drying the seeds repeatedly every 12 hours. If the seeds remain too wet, they will not germinate properly, and you will run the risk of growing molds. Make sure the screens are not blocked and allow adequate ventil ventilation of the mason jar. You do not want seeds to rest against the screens. They will attempt to grow through the screen if you do. Some individuals recommend pre-washing their seeds in a 3% hydrogen peroxide solution to kill any bacteria. I do not think that this is warranted. The next question is when do you know when the sprouts are ready for harvesting? Some say three to five days, some seven days. You know when they are ready when the sprouts completely fill the mason jar, as seen in this photo, if you had started with two tablespoons of seeds. This is what your finished sprouts should look like. So the next question is how much of this stuff should I be eating? Dr. Dr. Patrick states that she has no idea. No one does. She references a clinical study where 60 milligrams per day was used to treat prostate cancer. She then states that a non-blanched mason jar of sprouts yields about 90 to 120 milligrams of sulforaphane. That means that one jar contains enough for two people per day at 60 milligrams per day. If you only want 30 milligrams per day, then one jar contains enough for four people per day. Let's look at a dosage chart. Measuring these small amounts is troublesome at the blanched levels. Blanching is a process that potentially increases the sulforaphane levels by a factor of 3.5. From this chart, we can see that blanching has the potential to increase the sulforaphane production by up to 3.5 times what it normally would be. This process works because the heat destroys another compound that inhibits the formation of sulforaphane when glucoraphanin and myrosinase are combined. We see that the blanching inhibits the production of sulforaphane nitrile and increases the production of sulforaphane, which is the good stuff that we want. Heat destroys myrosinase. So when you cook your broccoli, you're destroying the myrosinase in the broccoli. When this happens, no sulforaphane can be created. You can overcome this by adding foods that contain high levels of myrosinase in your cooked broccoli, such as mustard powder. Precise temperatures are critical to the blanching process. Okay, so how do you heat water to precisely 70 degrees centigrade without a bunch of high-tech thermometers? Dr. Patrick depicts 
using a temperature probe to reach the 70 degrees centigrade temperature. There are other simpler ways to set the temperature. 70 degrees centigrade is 158 degrees Fahrenheit. The boiling water of sea, at sea level, boiling temperature of water at sea level is 212 degrees Fahrenheit. My cold tap water is 60 degrees Fahrenheit. For those conditions, draw a black line on your mason jar exactly four inches from the countertop. Fill that jar with boiling water to that level. Then add 60 degree Fahrenheit tap water to top off the jar and quickly stir. Then take this water and pour it into your jar with the filled sprouts. Set your timer for 10 minutes. At the end of 10 minutes, drain the sprouts and rinse with tap water. Drain the sprouts thoroughly. Some people use a centrifugal salad dryer for this purpose. If you are not at sea level and your tap water is not 60 degrees Fahrenheit, then the formula for determining the, heat, the heated uh, water volumes are as follows. I hope all this helps. Uh, nobody knows for sure that all of this is all that reliable. Use common sense and some caution. What works for someone else may not work for you.